Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Leica with another video on Cyclone 3DR. In this one we're going to go over texturing uh, an object with external images and then also images from the scanner. So you can see here I've got an LGS file loaded where I have scan data of the sculpture. And then I also have images from the scanner. So each one of these represents an image brought in from my LGS file. So you can see here if I, if I click this button, it turns on my scan positions. So if we uh, double click on these scan positions, we can come in and actually it'll show us the imagery as well that's taken from that scan position. So we'll be utilizing that as well as we move along here. For now though, I'm going to go back to this 3D view. You can see this is a pretty, pretty thorough scan that we have here of the sculpture. Uh, off screen, I went ahead and created a mesh uh, just to save some time here because we want to focus on the texturing options that we have. So. See here, I'll turn off the point cloud. And I've got this mesh that I created uh, based off of that point cloud. So if we want to assign color values of texture to this mesh, to these individual triangles, first let's take a look. I'll just change the representation here so we can see smooth plus wire. You can see we have a lot of triangles in this mesh. Change it back to smooth. All of this is done on the texturing tab. So the first thing that you're probably going to have in most scenarios if you're using a terrestrial scanner is you've got the imagery from the scanner. In that case, we can actually just select the images. I'll select them over here and the figure. And then you can use what's called smart texture. So smart texture will try to use the, uh, the best image with the best angle on the triangle that it's going to actually use for colorization. So if I say smart texture here, uh, we can control the pixel size. We can ask it to optimize to best fit the, uh, the texture, which I'm going to do here. Uh, and then I'll say consider triangle orientation. What consider triangle orientation will do will try to prevent um, triangles that are facing the opposite direction being uh, having texture applied from something that says maybe behind them. So we'll go ahead and click preview on this just to see what our texture looks like. too long here to calculate this. All right, and we've got our textured mesh here. So not too bad. That's using the texture from the scanner. Definitely does a pretty good job. Everything seems to match up. That's what we would expect to see here. Uh, if we weren't happy with this, though, let's say that we have scans that we don't have images for, or we didn't take photos whenever we were out scanning. You can also use, I'm going to cancel this uh, just so we can revert back to our original uh, mesh. You can also use external photos. So like say if you took some photos with your phone or um, even if you, you know, like in this case, it's a site that you could Google uh, and pull down some images that way to apply texture, you can do so. So I just have a couple images here. Uh, I just have them as JPEGs. I'm just going to drop them in. And you can see as we drop them in, we have an image group show up here on the left. And I've got Bison Texture 1 and Bison Texture 2. Now, one thing that we have to do with externally imported images is we have to estimate their pose. So what we do first is we select our, uh, our mesh, and then we grab an image, and then we say Estimate Pose. So now what we do is we do the same thing that we might do for like an endpoints registration in 3DR. We just use points that are on the mesh to correspond to pixels on the image. I'll try to do my best here to pick pixels that we can use. These little bison beards probably work the best for us. Maybe the ear on this tab. We're going to need four. And I try to spread them around the image a little bit. Uh, let's see what else we can get here. Mm. Trying to find a spot on the rock that would be a pretty good texture to use. I think this might be a good opportunity for us. And maybe, maybe let's use this spot as well. Okay. Now if 
we say OK, should move our image into place. one we'll do the same thing we'll estimate our pose here this one I can probably use the eyeball here on the bison along with the height same thing rock texture as well. Alright. That should be good. Go to our camera viewpoint. That's one way that you can check here as well. Once the pose has been estimated. See, now we have six pixels. We've got our camera viewpoint, and we can see where we're locked in here. So this looks like it's probably about the correct location. Get our transformation information. We say OK. So now if we were to click on this, we can zoom to it, or we should be able to zoom to it. Or we go to camera viewport here. Showing us the location. So I think I need to go back. We'll go back and do the estimate pose on the first one again. I need to add six pixels. I only had five in, I believe, so we didn't get our residuals calculated. So I need to go back onto this side of the sculpture. And we'll just run through really quick here. We'll pick some points. See if we can solve with some rocks here. There we go. We'll go to camera viewport, viewpoint, and we'll say okay. So now, using these, we can do the same thing. So we can use a standard texture, we can grab the mesh. We can say standard texture or smart texture. So if we have more than one image, we can say smart texture. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll, uh, we'll preview this and see what our texture looks like with our other images. Now we should probably have different exposure levels because these two images are two different um, daylight levels. Yeah, so that actually looks a lot cleaner in my opinion than our standard texture from our images. Uh, from our scan images. Now this side looks like our texture is off, so we'll need to go back and fix that texture. But this side looks uh, fantastic actually. So let's see if we can go back over here and fix this texture on this side. Go to our camera viewport, make sure that we have the one that we are looking at. So it looks like one might be our uh, our problem here. So let's take one and grab our image again, and then let's do estimate pose. Make sure we have the correct size. Yeah, this is definitely the one that I need to adjust. So we'll fix our pose by going back through, and I'll try to pick the same points. Grab this one. Uh, 
this one as well. The ear point again. Let's see if we can grab a point on the edge of the tail as well. So I'm going to add a few more points in just to sprinkle in a little bit more redundancy and then we can toggle some of these off uh, to try to reduce our overall pixel error. Looks like we can probably still use this point as well. All right, let's turn that off. Adding some combinations here just so you can get a feel for how this will be done. That one there. All right, so essentially now that we have some extra points in here, we can try to toggle off some of our worst ones. Um, let's sort by the projection error, and then we'll turn off point four. That's not looking too bad. Point one, now one definitely that throws off a major problem. So five really off if we no, let's turn one back on that's not too bad that's just a few pixels off let's um let's see what that looks like still pretty far off let's turn this back on maybe turn off turn five back on one no definitely one is definitely uh essential I turn off two and five. There we go. The dropping four helps a lot. Go to our camera viewport. Say okay. All right, now let's try the smart texture again. We'll update our current texture. Let's take a look. Much better. So our texturing, you can see that we've got we've got it lined up a lot better with the external image. Um, but we do just have one image from either side. So that's kind of the fault, the uh, the drawback of using an external image. If you're going to do it, you definitely want to probably have images from the front and the back here because you see we have we kind of have some blank spots where we don't have overlap. So we've got direct. Uh, imagery from one side here. We've got direct imagery from this other side, but then whenever we go like back, top, and front, we don't have an image that covers this area. So whereas if we added smart texture from the uh, the scan positions, that might help us in this case. But anyway, I just wanted to quickly go over the um, the texturing functions, and we got to see a little bit of how to troubleshoot texturing as well. If you have an issue on one side, you can go back in and re-estimate the camera pose. So um, that being said, I, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.